Hello guys, in this tutorial, we'll talk about collections. So before starting with collections, let's talk about array. So how to define an array, we have to specify data type and then we have to mention the array name, which is A. And then we have to say new array and we have to define the size here. Now the drawback of array is you can, you can have only 10 elements now. We cannot increase and we cannot uh, decrease also. So if you say 10 at the time of declaration, it will be 10. The prop now uh, to overcome this problem, we have a new framework of uh, collection in Java. Now, to use a collection, we have to use an interface called a collection. So, in Java, we have a collection interface. Now, uh, by importing package, uh, it's collections, okay, it's collection. Now, now uh, we'll say the, uh, the, the reference as C. Now, in order to create object or instance of a collection, uh, unfortunately, this collection is an interface. You can see it's an interface, right? So to create an object of uh, or to instance of this collection, we have to use a class which has implemented a collection. And the class name is ArrayList. So ArrayList is a class in, in collection framework which has implemented uh -oh, which has implemented this collection interface. Okay, so let's see if you go to this class ArrayList. As you can see, this class array list has extended. Okay. So this array, array list extends abstract list and it implements list. That means we have one more interface called as list. And if you go to this list now, this list extends collection. So indirectly, this array list class implements collection. So we can create an object of array list and a reference of collection. Now, how to add elements? It, uh, see, by default, this array list will have 10 elements. Okay, so it, it will take only 10 elements, or it, it has a size of 10 elements. We can add more than 10 elements, we can reduce the number of elements. So, to add an element, we have to say c dot add, and we can add elements. Like, we have, let's say we add one, we can add, let's say, two, right? we can add any number of elements. And in the, the amazing part is we can add any type of element. So we can say one, two, Navin, then C dot add. Let's say when I can add 5.5, .5, that means it supports all type of elements is because by default collection is a collection of objects. And all these types are objects. One is integer, which is object. String, Navin is a string, but is the subclass of object, right? Because all the classes like integer or string or double, they are subclasses of object class, right? So that's the advantage of using a, a collection, right? Now, how to print a collection? It's very easy. You can use a enhanced for loop. Enhanced for loop will pick up since we are using a object type, we'll say object O in C. So it will fetch one one value of a collection interface, uh, one one value of from this collection and then we can print it. So we can say S out and O. Now you can see it will print all the values. Amazing, right? It can print all the values. So the advantage of collection is it's the, it's the collection of objects, right? And we can directly add elements. We can remove elements. So we can say C dot, we have option of remove. If I don't want two, I can just specify two. And if I run this now, so it will print one, Navin and 5.5. .5. It's because it has removed two. So we can add elements, we can remove elements, which are not possible in array, right? Now, now since it's an advantage that you can have any type, it's also a drawback. It's because whenever you create an application and when you use a array list or a collection, you are using that collection for specific types. The example, we can say we have a collection of names, we have a collection of numbers, we have a collection of images. That means this collection should be of a particular type. If I say there's a collection C, this C should be of type integer, or it should be a string, or it should be a like a, a, any object, right? But it should not be default, which means by default, this collection is a collection of objects. What I want, I want it to be a collection of maybe integers. So what I can do is to specify this collection should not support string, it should not support double, it should only support integers, we can use something called as generates. 
Now what is generics? We can just specify in Angular brackets that this only this should only support integer. And in this side also we can specify this is integer. Now this type of uh, styling is called as generics. So we can specify which type of elements we should have using this generic symbol. Now question that is why Angular brackets is because on your keyboard the only uh, symbols which are remaining is this angular brackets. That, that's why the uh, generics uses this angular brackets. Now, uh, generics was introduced in version 1.5, and in 1.7, we have a new update where you don't have to mention the type on the right side of the uh, collection, which means uh, when you create a reference, you have to define the type of the collection, but, but when you create an instance, you don't need to create it's because it will fetch that type from the left side right and you can see now we are getting error here and that's why it will not support so we'll just remove this part and from this we'll remove 0.5 so now it will support so it supports all the integers now then amazing thing is now this c is not a collection of objects this is a collection of integers so what we can do we can simply say it is integers right and now if I print this, I will get all the integers. Again, I have removed two, that's why it's not printing two. So this is the basic of collection. We'll go in detail in the subsequent tutorial. So do subscribe and thanks for watching.